Blessings of God be upon you, O my Master, O God's Messenger. Blessings of God be upon you and your household members, the good and the pure. Blessings be upon you and upon your cousin, the one who was martyred in the pulpit, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Peace be upon him. And upon your daughter, the peace of you, Fatima al Zahra, the one who's wronged, the one whose rights were stolen. And upon your son, Al Hassan al Mushtaba, Al Muqatta al Hasha, the one whose inners were cut up, the fourth of the people of the cloth. And upon your son, Al Hussein, the martyr of Karbala, the one whose turban and whose cloak were torn from him. You have done well. Blessed be you, O my masters, and blessed be the earth in which you are buried. And you were successful, and good luck to you, O glad tidings to you. If only, if only, if only, I would have been successful with the people of your revolution, that would have been a great success. Dear brothers and sisters, 
Today is the second Majlis for Muharram and as you may remember yesterday we talked about some of the context of Muharram and Imam Hussein and why it's important in the Islamic calendar and how nothing stays the same forever and how Islam changes with the change in the Hujjah the change in the Imam of God on earth the Khalifa of God on earth and it's a big mistake to assume everything stays the same and that religion is fixed it's a mistake to think that religion is fixed and never changes because a human, the Khudja is a human being and a human being goes through trial and tribulation and the, and the Khudja is successful and what changes is the status of the Ummah with regards to the Khudja and not only does the Khudja go through trial and tribulation but so do his supporters. The story of Karbala truly is uh, full of lessons for all types of people. I just want to read to you a little bit about one of the reasons why it's such a travesty for Hajj to die young. Never mind Hajj being tortured and, and killed and, and butchered. But for Hujjah to die young is a great loss for the Ummah itself. So there is somebody asked Sayyid Ahmed Hassan one time that what did Imam Hussein mean in this supplication of Arafah? So Imam Hussein and Islam, as you know, he was performing the Hajj when he decided to to chase the Umrah and then to leave the Makkah because he had received so many letters from Kufa inviting him to come and to set up the government in Kufa so he had actually been to Arafah and he was doing his supplication, his dua at Arafah and the narrators say and historians say that Imam Hussein not only did he uh, do uh, Hajj walking many times and so did Imam Hassan by the way but this time in, in Arafah when he was supplicating and he was praying on the Mount of Arafah that people s- stopped doing their own pray- prayers and they came to listen to what Imam Hussein was saying so Imam Hussein, peace upon him was saying some special prayers he said Ilahi akhrijni min dhilli nafsi akhrijni min dhilli nafsi utahirni min shakki wa shirki so this actually means, oh God, oh my Lord, take me out from the disgrace of my of myself, the embarrassment of myself, or the disgrace of myself, and purify me from my doubts and from my shirk, from my polytheism. So somebody might say, well, what did Imam Hussein mean by saying this? Basically what Imam Hussein was saying is, but how the Sayyid explains what this means is there are three types of shirk so we know in the Quran it says in the shirk that shirk and ascribing partners and polytheism is a crime is a great crime great injustice and that God doesn't forgive shirk so what did Imam Hussein mean here? the Sayyid explains that there is there are different types of shirk there are three types of shirk what is a shirk uh, a zahiri or a shirk al zahir which is the apparent shirk which is obvious it's where you worship or somebody might worship an idol okay or somebody might worship a non-compliant scholar which are also like idols but they have tongues that's the first kind of shirk second kind of shirk is all forms of showing off all forms of showing off meaning you do something to show people you do something because there are a lot of people who are going to watch you you know you do something to get subscribers because you want attention you do something to get likes you do something in public because you want people to watch see how pious you are that's another kind of shirk you are effectively doing things to please people so you are raising people to like status of being God in a sense okay that's another kind of shirk you can call that a shirk al khafi hidden shirk and then you have another third kind of shirk 
which is sometimes called a shirk and nafsi. It's a personal kind of shirk. It's very hidden. And what this kind of shirk is, if you remember yesterday, we talked about Prophet Muhammad wanting to, or regarding himself as uh, a, a crime, a lambun azim, a big sin, meaning only Allah Almighty has the right to exist. So your own existence, if you think your own existence is a kind of shirk, is, a, is a, like in competition with Allah, then this is, then you realize your, this kind of shirk that there is within all of us. So Imam Hussain and Islam, what does he want? He wants, basically, he's saying, none deserves to exist but Almighty God, and that his existence is a grave sin. So, here, one could argue that I remember one of our teachers in the Hausa he said here that Imam Hussain was asking for Fanafillah, annihilation in Allah. See these words like Fanafillah, uh, Shirk, Khafi, these are words that usually are the people of, of who love Ahl al-Bayt or who are like mystics, the Sufi, the Sufi, Sufi, they know these words, they use these words to try and cleanse the ego, try and kill out, cut out the arrogance. So they're familiar with these words. So we should all be familiar with these words because at least people who say we love Prophet's family, we should also learn this. So Imam Hussain was saying, oh Allah, I want there to be nothing left but you. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, what God Almighty did, in order to give Imam Hussain a fatul mubin, meaning the, the great opening, meaning to elevate him to a place where he effectively loses himself and there's only Allah left in the way the Prophet Muhammad this upon him and his family also reached. What Allah did was He didn't give this to Imam Hussain whilst he was alive, He gave it to him through his martyrdom. So, one, you could say, one sign of Imam Hussain reaching such a high status is when they lifted up the heads on the spears. This is a sign that Imam Hussain had reached a lofty height. May Allah SWT give us the, the fortitude and the patience to understand these heavy heavy topics. So basically going back to the point we were making earlier, the Hujjahs always die very young because just this one sentence from Ram saying is like a lesson for us in life, the beer for us. Now just imagine how would it have been, how would it have been had Imam Hussain been allowed to live longer? How how would it have been? How much wisdom would we have acquired from Imam Hussain and the Prophet Islam? You can ask any Muslim about the story of when Imam Hussain and Imam Hassan were young and they saw an old man who was performing wudu. He was performing wudu, meaning doing the ablution, the prayer, and they saw him doing this and they realized that this man, this gentleman, was making a mistake. So what they decided to do, rather than say to him, you know, excuse me, you're making a mistake, they decided to actually say to him, please watch us do our, our own uh, wudu, our own ablution, and please tell us which one of us is doing it right, which one of us is doing it wrong. So they both did it the same way. So when the old gentleman, he saw that they're both praying, they're doing the wudu the same way, therefore it must be me who is doing it a bit wrong. So in this way, Prophet Muhammad and his family had such wisdom that they were able to uh, impart this wisdom to people uh, in a way that they wouldn't even feel put out or feel embarrassed in any way. So this is the wisdom of Imam Hussain. Just one snippet of the wisdom of Imam Hussain. Now today, Brothers and sisters, because it's the second of Muharram, we wanted to discuss a short uh, account of a gentleman who joined Imam Hussain in Karbala and gave his life for the Imam. And his name was Al Hur ibn Zid al Riyahi. Al Hur ibn Zid al Riyahi. The story of Al Hur is unique, actually, really unique. 
So Al-Hur was actually, his name means freedom. And Al-Hur was in the army of Azir Dhanatullah, he was one of his generals. And Al-Hur actually met Imam Hussain before Imam Hussain al Islam actually reached Karbala. So Al-Hur had been told to, to go and meet Imam Hussain a, a, a couple of stops before Imam reached Karbala and Al-Hur went with, a, with a, his group, with his battalion and he met the Imam and Al-Hur because uh, anyone who missed the Hujjah uh, of the time and spent any time with them they begin to feel uh, very attracted to the Hujjah so Al-Hur actually met the Imam and he became very impressed with him and Al-Hur then was a command to accompany the Imam to Karbala. He was always an esteemed figure, was Hur. It's narrated that his grandfather, Attab, was also a companion of uh, King Nu'man, and his sons, Qais and Ka'nab, were, had held significant positions. And he was a leader in Kufa. And even Ziyad had appointed him to intercept Imam Hussein al Islam. So Al Hur. You can imagine the caravan of Imam Hussein was traveling. They went through around 25, 24, 25 places on the way to Karbala, on the way to Kufa. They were trying to get to Kufa. And towards the end, the last three or four that I remember, was where Al Hur actually met the Imam in a, in a group of a thousand riders. So Abu Mikhnaf has a makhtar, as a, as a historian. He said that Abdullah bin Sulaim and Madri bin Mush'am al Asadi they accompanied Imam Hussein to a place called Sharaf. So, where they drew water and they continued in their journey until noon time. And then, then one of the men exclaimed, Allah Akbar, upon seeing something, and Imam Hussein said, Why did you say that? And the gentleman said, I see palm trees. However, it turned out to be the heads of horses. So then, then they kept on going to a place called Ruh Hassan. And then, then more forces arrived and Al-Hur was leading them for the forces. And then when Al-Hur met the Imam, the Imam decided to give water to Al-Hur and his, and his men. And when they were so along this, all along this, this, this uh, encounter, Al-Hur is being affected by Imam Hussein's character. And then when it was time for prayer, <coughs> Imam Hussein led the prayer and he spoke to the people and he, he was saying that he was going to Kufa in response to the letters that he had received. Then when Imam Hussein decided to leave, Al-Hur intercepted him. And then there was a, like a discussion, who are you, what are you trying to do? And then in the end, they, Al-Hur suggested to go via a route that neither went to Kufa nor back to Medina. So he's obviously trying to be diplomatic here. And he was trying to communicate with Ibn Ziyad. And so Imam Hussein, he agreed and they traveled towards the desert. You have to remember, at this time, Imam Hussein and Islam didn't have just 72 people. They had more than this. He had his whole caravan with him. He had women, children, he had men, he had his family members, he had followers, he had Shia. Very peaceful caravan. So Imam Hussein and Islam was on his way to Kufa. They were close. Until and then, so Imam Hussein agreed to go with Hur, and they reached a place called Baida. And the Imam Hussein al Islam again he addressed his followers. And it became clear to Hur what was happening here and what Imam Hussein's mission was. And and the narrations say that. That actually, when they reached Karbala itself, that Al Hur began to contemplate hard that he wanted to join Imam Hussein. So, what he did, he was with one of his companions, and his companion says that I, I saw Hur, who was on our side of the camp, and Al Hussein ibn Ali, he was on the camp on the other side. And Al Hur had met with Hussein and he had sat with him and he tried to he discussed things with him. 
and his companion began to see like a, a strange change within al uh, contemplating, thinking what to do. And so the narration said that when al came back and he, he saw, his companion saw al slowly, slowly edging, sort of, so what Hur decided to do, he decided not to make it obvious that he was going to leave Yazid's army and join Imam Hussein, but he began to, he said to his companion, I'm going to go get some water for my horse. So he, like, went parallel, Muzawi, and he like, parallel to the, the army of Yazid until he reached the uh, Euphrates, Furat, Nahar Furat, he reached Euphrates. When he reached Euphrates, then he he did like an ellipse. He kind of walked along Euphrates, inconspicuous, not trying to arouse any attention, until he went as far as he could, and then from there he came back, and then entered into the camp of Imam Hussein. So, at some point, Hor made the decision that he has this path, or he has that path. And when he actually narration say when he began to realize what was what was happening to Imam Hussein, he actually went to the army and he reasoned with them because he was a he was a general. He said that you you have uh, stopped this man. So again, they would use language to show that they were neutral. This is how tactical people behave. He didn't say. Imam Hussein, when Imam uh, Hussein, he didn't say it like this. He said, "Entom wakaftum." What was this effect? Wakaftum. How the Rajul, within them, you stop this man with no sin. My name is an innocent man, and not allowed him to have water. So he was testing his army commander. This is what people like this they do. They don't make it obvious, and he tried to reason with them, and they wouldn't listen. But then this is when he made his decision. That he really he. When you read the narrations, you hear that people used to join Imam Hussein because he was son of Sayyid Fatima and son of Imam Ali. People had, like the Sayyid Salam Ali, Sayyid Ahmed Hassan, he explains that when Imam Hussein says, I'm son of Ali, I'm son of Fatima, it was known that these were the, this was the will that Prophet was handing over governance to his household. Not just to Imam Ali, but also to Sayyid Fatima. Sayyid Fatima was regarded as an authority in that time, high authority, everyone knew, everyone, nobody challenges. So they would often say, this is the son of Fatima, this is the son of Ali. And so how can you, they would say sometimes, Ibn bint al-Rasul, how can you uh, hold this man, you know, with no water and no comfort? And then at that point he decided that he was going to, he was going to join the army of Imam Hussein. So he joined the army of Imam Hussein, and the narrations say that when he went, he he went, was very repentant. Taib, Khan Taib, the Wab Taib. He was asking for forgiveness. And some narrations even say that he took his relatives with him, two of his relatives, and they blindfolded him. He said, "Blindfold me, and take in one hand a sword, in one hand the Quran, and." He, he held him like this, he said, take me to Imam Hussain. And when he reached there, he said, Ya Manat bint Rasulullah, uh, it's up to you whether you forgive me or whether you punish me for, for what I've done. I hadn't realized this is what they were going to do to you. And Imam Hussain, he said that what's the effect that you truly are hot, you truly are free. And even some narration said that the Imam said to him that your mother chose the right name for you when she called you Al-Hur. And Al-Hur, they say in some narrations, he even said that when he told the Imam, when I was leaving the Kufa, that he had heard a voice saying, Abshib al-Jannah, or was that effect, that to have blood tidings of heaven. And he was saying, I couldn't understand what that meant. So, he was some narration saying that Imam Hussain said, we were expecting you, Hur, because your name is written in the ones who are martyred with me. This is Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi. 
this is just one man and it's narrated that when Hur, it was one of the not sure exactly which day he he fought but he everyone who went to fight would ask Imam Hussain for permission to fight but he kept trying he kept trying and trying to reason with the enemy to to stop the fight to save him up saying it wasn't they they tried their best they really did but he gave a leader to Mount Hussein and they say that he killed many men before he was finally slain until he was finally slain and then when Hur actually he was he was felled, he was smitten, and he fell down. Then Imam Hussain said worse the effect, like I said earlier, you were truly free as your mother named you. Free in this world and happy in the hereafter. And for this reason, we do Ziara of Hur, we remember him. May Allah raise his name in this life and the hereafter. Al-Hur had descendants. It says that they have a Mustafawi or Mustafawi, Mustafawi family residing in Qazween who trace their lineage back to Al-Hur. And that there is a family also in Jabal Amil in Lebanon which also say that they are descended from Al-Hur. And also you have Al-Hur al uh, who was from the same family of course work with Sa'il of Shia. So whether these people are descended from Hur or not descended from Hur, at least we can see that people feel honor that they're descended from these noble characters. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad khilmati wa mahdiyina wa sallam tisrima اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أئمتي ومهدينا وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أئمتي ومهدينا وسلم تسليما There's so many brothers and sisters, so many martyrs in Karbala It might be befitting to just read some of the names of the uh, descendants from Sayyidina Abu Talib Salaam Alayhi's family You know uh, Say Muhammad Sadiq al Sadr, Shahid al Sadr is sometimes known. He would, in his, he has an encyclopedia of Masu'a uh, Imam Mahdi, and sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he opens and inspires some high scholars with some knowledge. And his view, as I recall, is his view, his opinion, or his understanding that when he says, In Allah, Astafa Adama, Wanuhan, Wa Ali Ibrahim wa Ali Imran There's a verse in the Quran which is like this Ali Imran Al-Alameen So when it says Astafa Ali Imran Al-Alameen That Allah chose the family of Imran On all of the worlds That He's saying actually Imran Here refers to Sayyidina Abu Talib Because his name actually was Imran And Somebody might say well he must refer to the, the family of Moses or Harun or even Marim al Islam or even Isa al Islam. But in fact, the point is that if, say, the father of the Zahra, Sallallahu is Sayyidat al Nisa al Alameen al Awwal al Afreen, the leader of the women of all the world from the ones before and the ones after. And Sibdain al Hassan al Hussein, Sayyidah Shabab al Ahl Jannah, the leaders of the youth of paradise. Therefore, their progeny would be the leaders of the hereafter and this world also. So, therefore, Imran makes sense to be Sayyidina Abu Talib. So, how many members of Sayyidina Abu Talib and his family perished in Karbala? We just have to read the names.
and these are the best of the best. These are really are the best of the best. You don't find people like this easily. And you re recognize some of the names who used to fight alongside Imam Ali al Islam, the Battle of the Camel, Battle of Sifi, Nahrawan. And many of the ones who, people who were with Imam Hussain in Karbala also met their end here in Karbala. They were with Imam Ali before that. They were martyred in Karbala. So we have the sons of Imam Ali, Al Abbas, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abi Talib. Then we, he's also known as, of course, to say that Abu Fadl Abbas. Then we have Jafar, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abi Talib. And then we have Abdullah, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abi Talib. Then we have Uthman, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abi Talib. Then we have Muhammad, Ibn Ali, Ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad al Asghar, or Muhammad al Muhammad bin al Hanafiya. He was also martyr in Karbala. He was, he was like a, a support to Imam Hussain, respecting his brothers always. Who from the progeny of Imam Hassan passed away was martyr in Karbala? You have Al Qasim, Ibn al Hassan, Ibn Ali. This is, of course, Imam Hassan's progeny. So Al Qasim, then you have Abdullah, Ibn al Hassan, Ibn Ali. Now, who from the progeny of Imam Hussain was martyr in Karbala? We have Ali Al Akbar Ibn Al Hussein Ibn Ali. We have Abdullah Ibn Al Hussein Ibn Ali, who is also known as Ali Al Asghar or Abdullah Al Radi, the the baby, six month old baby. These are not all the names. These are some of the names which are known. I have also read in some places dozens of names who are from Ali Abi Talib. We also have sons of Abdullah bin Jafar Ibn Abi Talib, Aoun bin Abdullah Ibn Jafar Ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad. Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Jafar, Ibn Abi Talib. Then you have sons of Aqil. You have Muslim Ibn Aqil, Ibn, Ab Ibn Abi Talib. And of course, he was martyred in Kufa. How was he martyred? He was thrown from the top of a, a high building. Abdullah, Ibn Muslim, Ibn Aqil. Muhammad, Ibn Muslim, Ibn Aqil. Abdurrahman, Ibn Aqil, Ibn Abi Talib. Jafar, Ibn Aqil, Ibn Abi Talib. Abdullah ibn Aqil ibn Abi Talib Then the sons of Jafar ibn Abi Talib This is Jafar al Tayyar, the Aswan, Jafar al Tayyar. He was martyred in the Battle of, I think, Mu'ta up near Syria, the border of Syria. So you have Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Jafar ibn Abi Talib. You have Awan ibn Abdullah ibn Jafar ibn Abi Talib. So, I just want to read one poem before we finish today. As always, these Find one for Allah Masalla Muhammad wa Muhammad, the Mati and Mahdina or Salim Sina, Allah Masalla Muhammad wa Muhammad, the Mati and Mahdina or Salim Sina, Allah Masalla Muhammad wa Muhammad, the Mati and Mahdina or Salim Sina, Allah Masalla Muhammad wa Muhammad, the Mati and Mahdina or Salim Sina. So I want to read this poem to you. It's from Brother Ahmad Al Khaliji, and you may have heard this in heard the video of this one, or heard the brother recite this one on the Sega channel. And I'll read it in the Arabic because the Arabic is beautiful, and then inshallah I will uh, translate for you in a summary translation. Malakat Dima Oka Ya Hussein Uradati. سيرتني عبدا إليك مريدا فعبيدك الأحرار قد علمتهم لا يرتضون لا يرتضون مع الحسين يزيدا عبد إليك وأنت عبد الذي أعطيته البلدان والمولودا 
فجزاك ربك يا حسين بكربلا ذكرا عليا باقيا وخدودا فالحر من اهدى النفوس لاهلها احرارهم اذ حاربوك عبيدا والحر من اعطاك كل وجوده ومضى بدربك يا حسين شهيدا والعبد من يرضى الحياة لذلها وإمامه بين الطغاة وحيدا إني وجدت اليوم كل أئمتي لن يسجدوا للظالمين سجودا فرأيتهم ما بين من شقت له حاما وكان على الطغاة عميدا ما بين مسموم يجود بنفسه حتى حتى قد استفيه عليه فقيدا ما بين مذبوح ويرفع يرفع رأسه فوق الرماح ويكل توحيدا هذه الأقيلة رغم كل مصابها لم تثنها الآلام والتقييدا هزت مجال سؤال آل هند صوتها اجمع يزيد عدة وجدودا في آخر الأزمان ننظر دولة فيها سنرقب أحمد الموعودا دا قائم الأقحار ابن محمد خير الوراء بعد الهداة في عميدا خير الوراء بعد الهداة في عميدا so this basic translation of this means of the same your blood has taken over completely owned my intentions you have made me a servant for you who wants you your your servants they are actually free people you have taught them that they'll never be happy with the Yazid whilst there is a Hussein slave I'm a servant for you and you are a servant for the one for whom you gave your progeny and and your baby so may God may God reward you may God reward you Hussein for what happened in Karbala may he raise your your status, may people remember you forever so the real free person is the one who gives the soul for his people their freedom or the free people when the people have made war against you or their free people, their enemies free people when they make war against you are actually slaves. This is what it means. So you have given yourself for the people, so you are free. Those people who think they are free because they are fighting you, they are actually slaves. And the free person is the one who gives everything he has. And he He follows your path for saying as a martyr and the slave truly the slave is the one who is pleased with life with this disgrace element whilst his imam is being uh, tossed around passed around amongst the amongst the despots to cool the tyrants so that's the real slave the one who likes living whilst the imam is being in custody these things I hope you understand what they mean these things sometimes they refer to like Imam Musa al Qadim, who was being passed from prison to prison and he was being, being tortured so, so what, what he's saying is how can you live 
whilst your mom is being treated like that, or like say that Amr Hassan, we don't know what the situation is. We just pray that he's in good state, good situation, but he's also always under threat. And then he says, I found today every one of my moms. They never bow down to transgressors. Sometimes in life you you just yearn to see some justice somewhere. And the only place you ever see justice is when you hear the Imams talk or you hear a narration from the Imams. So very poignant these words, very poignant. So he says, I have seen them either sometimes Sometimes the heads being split. This is of course Imam Ali, Imam Ibn Talib, Amir Mu'min Ali Salam. He didn't give in to the tyrants, to the 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 despots, to the objectors. This means sometimes they are poisoned and they are the Imam sometimes struggling to breathe or he's breathing his last he's describing the last hours of when Imam to be poisoned and then the, like Imam Hassan and Islam, his liver melted and his, his life is slowly slowly leaving his body or like Imam Jawad, all the Imams slowly slowly they leave, their souls leave the body and they're finding it hard to breathe they're suffocating until the, the idiot or the city person took his uh, took his life. My bayna madbuhin rasu. Sometimes the Imam is being is being butchered and his head is being lifted on a on a spear. And he's reading Tawheed. What does this mean? This means this is referring to Imam Hussein and Islam. Sunni books, Shia books, all of them say that Imam Hussein's head was heard reading the Quran. It was heard reading the Quran. Everyone says this. No one denies this. This is Aqila. Despite all of her sadness, it could refer to Aqila, meaning the sensible one, meaning Sayyidah Zainab, could refer to Aqila from Imam Hussein's family. Allah knows best. But either way, saying despite all of her calamities, the pain and the incarceration still didn't defeat her. Hazrat Mujal Su'ala in Sautuha Ijma' Yazidu Hazrat al Mujnoon. So, what this is referring to is when, they were, when the children of Imam Hussein were crying in the prison in Syria, this actually disturbed the family of Hind, meaning Yazid, disturbed them. They weren't able to sleep and then Yazid, he saw a dream of Imam Hussain al Islam being uh, received up to heaven by Prophet Muhammad, Imam Sayyidina Hamza, Imam Al Hassan, uh, Imam Ali, Sayyidina Fatima, they were all receiving him. Fi Akhir Azman, Namlu Dawlatan, Fiha Sanarakub Ahmad al Mawhuda. In the end times, we are awaiting uh, a government or a state in which we will. We will look forward to receive Ahmad, the promised Ahmad. That is the the kind, the riser of the pure people, Ibn Muhammad, descended from Prophet Muhammad, he's been found him in his family. Khairul Wara, Ba'd al Hudat, Yamida, he's the best of the creation after uh, the guides uh, and the best leader for us. So, this is a beautiful poem. Again, credit to Brother Ahmad al Khaliji who put this together, a beautiful poem, it's a lesson for all of us and also it has been made into video and read by Muslim and Jayashi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the Prophet Allah, Allah muhafadahum Allah, al ikhwa wa al akhwat, the da'wah mubarakah, wa taqbal Allah minna wa minkum salih al-amal, may God accept our and your deeds and we will just, inshallah, bring this to a close now. ألا لعنة الله على الظالمين وسلام الذين ظلموا على محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين 
السلام على الحسين الذي ذبحت شانا السلام على الحسين الذي ذبحت شانا السلام على الحسين الذي ذبحت شانا يا حسين تركتها يوم التروية ولا زالت تنذر العنة غضبها عليهم فإليك حججت يا قبلة الله في سفن حسين وان هو أزمعة رافستي في سفن حسين وان هو أزبوش رافستي أو حسين We left the Kaaba on the day of Tarwiyah and it kept on sending the curse of its anger on them. So it's to you I do my migration. Oh, Qibla of God. So I'm saying it's a Qibla direction for us as Muslims. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad al Mati wa al-Mahdina wa sallim taslima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.